Well, welcome back to the Regal MSO 5000 series on uh, using this oscilloscope in embedded systems. Today I'm going to uh, diverge a little bit from looking at the specifics of the MSO 5000 and instead I'm going to look at uh, a few resources that I'll be using in the, the coming videos to illustrate and demonstrate how an oscilloscope like the MSO 5000 can be used in embedded systems. So on the screen is an I2C decode. That is, it's an IIC, that is an inter-integrated circuit bus that is being uh, decoded by the MSO 5000. To give you a little bit of an idea, and, and don't worry, we're going to be talking about this in some detail later when we, but before we get there, we have to talk about things like how do you trigger on a serial bus, how do you decode a serial bus, and how do you set up the uh, oscilloscope to enable you to read these serial buses, because they are very much a part of embedded systems today. The uh, I'm not going to describe very much about what's on the screen here because until we go into a little more depth, for those of you that have not seen serial buses before, it'll just be confusing. Basically, this uh, is a two-wire serial bus. And what that means is one wire is used as a clock, and that's the signal you see here in yellow in the middle of the screen. And then at the bottom of the screen in blue, you see the uh, data uh, signal. In between those two, you see decodes and, for example, the uh, this data spells S I L E N T. This uh, signal is being generated by an Agilent demo board. And that's partly what I want to talk about today are the demo boards. I also want to talk about various uh, web and printed resources that uh, I'll be referring to over the next few weeks that you might want to go ahead and uh, get. Now, as to the demo boards, I don't suggest that you go out and buy a demo board. Many oscilloscopes today, especially those made by Keysight and Tektronix, have most of these signals built into the scope, so you don't need a demo board anymore. Uh, and the, the demo board I'm going to be showing you made by Agilent has been largely discontinued by them. I have a copy or a uh, a version of the Agilent board, but uh, in part because it, you know it has an Agilent name on it, you know it's been around a while. So uh, let's take a look first at some demo boards that I'll be using and then at some printed resources, some of which I've referred to before in previous videos. So let's back away from this signal uh, for a second and pan down here on the uh, bench. And what you see are a series of demo boards. The, the board that I'm actually connected to is this uh, demo board by Agilent. It provides a number of signals. Uh, it's called the N2918, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, 2918-66402, for those of you that might want to look for it. Uh, once again, I'm not recommending that you go out and buy these, but next to it, to the left, is a demo board that was produced by Tektronix some years ago. It is called the MDO Demo 1 board. The uh, you may be able to see that written here, uh, and it was intended 
to be used as a demo unit for their multi, uh, mixed domain oscilloscopes which came out several years ago. So it has both an RF output as well as a bunch of other signals. And once again, I'm not going to go into the details of these. We'll see them in future videos. Behind that board is a board that I've used quite a bit and have had for some time. It is a board that's made by Regal and it's called the DS6000. Let me verify that. Yes, DS6000. And it is still available. Uh, once again, it, it may be a little bit out of date and it has some limitations, although it's, it's a pretty good board. Uh, but next to it is one by Siglent that is the most limited of the uh, of the boards. It only provides a relatively small number of signals. So we'll be using these from time to time, but to give you an idea of the kinds of things that boards can produce, uh, like this Agilent board, there are various serial bus uh, signals available. There are various glitches and uh, bad clocks and things like that that we will be looking at and uh, fundamentally it's, it's uh, some interesting signals that you can use to learn how to set up an oscilloscope when you're looking for some sort of either an anomaly in your design or uh, some kind of uh, problem that you're trying to diagnose with an oscilloscope in an embedded system. So let's move now to some literature that you might want to uh, look for. A lot of it is available online for free. I'm going to begin with the uh, guide for the board that we've been uh, looking at that you can see just still inside the picture over here on the, on the right. You can download this from the Keysight website and it is the evaluation guide and I'll leave this up here for a second so that you can uh, uh, see the title and everything. Uh, you do have to register with Keysight to download a lot of this stuff although it is available from some other sources uh, on the web. The main reason that I talk about this board is it has an, a lot of good information about how to set up an oscilloscope for various kinds of signals uh, including both analog and digital uh, serial buses, analog to digital converters and so on. So that is a good uh, book to have simply because it kind of gives you an idea of what sort of things you need to know to use an oscilloscope effectively in, uh, in evaluating and debugging an embedded system. I've mentioned this book before, High Speed Digital Design, A Handbook of Black Magic. In terms of the, the real down-to-earth, uh, what do you need to, to be aware of and how can you find problems in high-speed digital designs? This is probably the best resource I know of. There is a copy of this available on the web uh, and uh, I prefer printed copies. Uh, I had a copy of this and I loaned it out. It never came back so I bought another copy which shows you that I, I really do prefer the uh, uh, written books. Okay, what else could you use? The Keysight website can be a very good uh, source of application notes. This is a one which is a little bit marketing and a little bit technical. Uh, evaluating oscilloscopes to debug mixed signal designs. Now, I say it's a little bit marketing because the uh, 
the, the intention of this, and of course they, they need to produce some revenue to afford to make these application notes, is to show you what you probably will want to look for in an oscilloscope if you're going to be working on a mixed signal design. Now, I've said in previous videos, I think the Keysight uh, scopes are excellent, and if I were equipping a lab for a uh, mixed signal uh, commercial lab, I would probably go with Keysight uh, oscilloscopes. They're a little expensive for, in general, for educational purposes, although they do produce a, a fairly nice line, but I'm not here to try to sell you Keysight uh, oscilloscopes. What I am trying to do is to show you where you can find good material that will work for uh, for training. Now, there are uh, here, for example, is a an application note. Uh, this one also is an has an agilent number five fifty nine ninety one dash eleven seventeen en on switch mode power supply measurements that. Uh, complements the uh, one of my earlier videos on measuring power supplies and goes a lot further than the uh, the power analysis functions of the MSO5000 that I treated in a previous video. Uh, there also is a very good uh, webcast that goes with this called Power Measurements and Analysis that you can find on YouTube. Uh, one of the best sources of design information in this area is you can get from Texas Instruments. And so let me just run through this briefly and give you an idea of the kinds of things that you can find with uh, in, in an application note like this. I'm going to go through this fairly fast. So uh, this uh, application note talks about how you can set up, for example, the kind of probes you need. Uh, by the way, there's a there's a pretty good EEV blog post on YouTube on uh, uh, oscilloscope probes. Uh, the best uh, YouTube video I have seen on, on probes for oscilloscopes is actually uh, posted by Yokogawa. It's called Total Measurement Webinar, or I'm sorry, Test and Measurement Webinar. So you might want to look for that. The, uh, as you can see, they talk about how, why you need to de-skew. Then they talked about power quality analysis, which I've talked about on the MSO5000. The, uh, they talk about inrush current, and by the way, if you're looking for some good videos on inrush current, you might want to look at the KISS Analog YouTube videos. The, uh, they also talk about switch mode and now are switching losses, and I've previously mentioned the Cat Kim Show and Sam Benyakov. They produce some very good videos in this area. The uh, more about loss, switching loss analysis. Then slew rate analysis, which is also very important. Once again, Sam Ben Yakov has done some excellent videos in that area. Uh, and then what they call modulation analysis, really what they are looking at is the loop response of the power supplies. And one of the best sources I have found in this area is Robert Bolanos. Uh, he is a professional power supply designer and his videos are not only uh, very well researched but uh, but very comprehensive. Uh, let's see, one, one more thing, yes. I, I also wanted to mention this is uh, transient response and there's another very good uh, video by Keysight Labs on YouTube called Power Supply Control Loop uh, Response Measurements. And so that gives you an idea of the kinds of things that you can find 
on the Keysight website. There's a very good article on the Regal website on mixed uh, signal oscilloscopes. There's also uh, an application note on the old Agilent website, which I think you can still download from the Keysight website, evaluating oscilloscopes to debug mixed signal designs. Uh, Tektronics produces some excellent uh, videos. This is called MSO and DPO series oscilloscopes. It's, uh, let me zoom in on the, uh, the web address there. And the, this is on debugging digital timing problems, but there are a number of good application notes there. And one of the areas that we are going to turn to fairly soon is this debugging serial buses in embedded system designs. This application note is produced by Tektronix, and I suggest that before you, if you haven't any background in serial buses, that you download this. Once again, here is the uh, title, and that will give you uh, a lot more background than I can do in, in a video. So uh, these, these are some of the resources that I suggest you might want to look for. So once again, the uh, we're going to be using demo boards like the Agilent there, and I'll try to explain as we go along a little bit of what you know, what is going on. But if you have the kind of background that you can get from these application notes, it will make it much easier to understand the video the first time through. Now, of course, I suggest you always watch a video more than once. I've learned at least as much the second time I watched a video as the first time on almost every subject. So maybe you'll be the same. But look forward to a number of new videos. Uh, I hope to pretty much go through all of the important functions of the MSO 5000. And by the time I'm finished, I hope that you will be better at debugging embedded designs than I am. And I'm no expert, but I've debugged a lot of embedded systems. So. Uh, in time, if you're not already an expert, I hope you will become one. Way to start is equip yourself with the right kind of good, dependable literature. Study it. Look at the problem from several points of view. Don't just read one application note. Try to get as many as you can. And watch as many videos on YouTube as you can. And I can guarantee you that if you put your mind to it, you'll be able to become a better embedded system debugger. So with that, I wish you stay safe and have a nice day.